Hey guys, Miss Michelle Fix It, otherwise known as Michelle Fix It. Today is June the 10th, 2023. Uh, I am starting the process of working on starting up a 501c3, otherwise known as a nonprofit. Uh, I'm going to be doing that in the state of Maryland. I'm trying to get you guys set up. So I am actually on Maryland.gov. Uh, Maryland, like you spell the state. Uh, Mike, Alpha, Romeo, Yankee, Lima, Alpha, November, Delta, Dot, Golf, Oscar, Victor. Um, and so when you go there, uh, it actually has forward slash charity, forward slash pages, forward slash nonprofit, dash organization, dot, Alpha, Sierra, Peter, X-Ray. Uh, so I'm on here and it's giving the information because if you guys have been watching the videos in order um, or if you're just here to start to know how to start up a nonprofit in Maryland, uh, on the nonprofit side, my hands are dirty because I was just working on my uh, husband's Toyota Tundra and found out that like it doesn't have a transmission dipstick so it's going to be a whole new thing on a whole new day. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, nonprofit organization in an attempt to provide information to individuals, individuals desiring to start a nonprofit organization in Maryland, the charitable organizations division of the office of secretary of state has gathered information set forth below on the necessary steps to form a nonprofit organization. While every attempt has been made to ensure the accuracy of the information, please be advised that specific questions and information should be directed to the appropriate agency. Uh, Maryland Association of Nonprofit Organizations, comma, Incorporated, has put together a checklist for starting a nonprofit organization in Maryland. Click here for a PDF copy of the checklist. Uh, this is very a very helpful resource when attempting to start a nonprofit. Uh, and then it says bolded federal income tax exemption. Uh, most charitable organizations are classified by the Internal Revenue Service as tax exempt as Tax exempt organizations, the benefit of obtaining the tax exempt status is that the organization is not liable for any federal income tax applications for this status are made to the Internal Revenue Service. If tax exempt status is granted, the organization will receive a tax determination letter. Uh, it is usually during this process that your organization will be designated an employee identification number or federal identification number. Give me one second. Uh, please note that these terms are used interchangeably, that this number is also required for many of the exemptions described below. I'm going to pause you guys. I'm back. Um, being a tax exempt entity does not automatically make donations to your organization tax deductible for the donors since most charitable organizations are considered section 501c3 organizations donations to these charities are generally tax deductible for the donor. Your organization's tax determination letter will state whether contributions to your organization are considered tax deductible. To obtain the necessary forms to apply for tax exemption, please contact the Internal Revenue Service by calling toll-free 1-877-829-5500 or downloading the forms from the IRS's website. The required forms are 1. Form SS4, Application for Employer Identification Number, Number two, form 8718, user fee for exemption for exempt organization determination letter request, and either three, form 1023, application for recognition of exemption for 501c3 organizations, or number four, form 1024, application for recognition of exempt exemption for all other exempt statuses. Uh, and then it also goes into state income tax exemption. So for my purposes, because I'm just trying to form mine as fast as possible, just to be able to get the grant money for the Be More Beautiful, uh, the Love Your Block, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, the IRS's website in a different tab, and I'm going to start off with my form SS4, and that's Sierra Sierra 4 um, and that's the application for employer identification numbers. So the EIN, which is more commonly what it's called, is going to be my starting point to be able to start this process just so I can get my ball rolling to get my foot in the door for the Maryland State stuff so that hopefully I can get the entity formed and then submit that with the application. So I don't really care about all of the exemption statuses and all that stuff right now because I just need a way to be able to get my grants. So I'm going to pause you guys again and then we'll be moving forward with the form Sierra Sierra-4 
on the IRS website. All right, so now I'm on uh, the IRS website and it says about form SS-4 application for employer identification number, otherwise known as EIN. Uh, use form SS-4 to apply for an employer identification number, EIN. An EIN is a nine digit, for example, one, two, three, four, one, two, dash, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, assigned to employers, sole proprietors, corporations, partnerships, estates, trusts, certain individuals, and other entities for tax filing and reporting purposes. So this is basically a number four, your federal stuff, because you have to deal with the federal, and then you have to deal with the state. Um, note, keep the form SS4 information current. Use form 8822-B as in Bravo to report changes to your responsible party address or location. Changes in responsible parties must be reported to the IRS within 60 days. So we have our current revisions, we have our instructions, um, and I am looking for a way to complete this form and get it sent out to them like ASAP. But it also said that I could call a number. So I'm going to click Form SS4 and see what that has. And this was revised last December 2019. So it says on here, application for identification, employer identification number. And for my timeline, it does have the instructions on it as well. And I feel like there is a online version of being able to get an EIN number because I did do this all online one time. So let me see. Uh, so I'm going to do a search for get EIN number IRS online and see what pops up. Because if I have to actually mail this form in, this is going to seriously delay my whole process. Mm, and of course, there's lots of places that want me to. Oh, here we go. Lots of places that want. Don't always go with the first one. You want to be dealing with stuff from the IRS.org. Determine your eligibility. Responsible. Understand the online process. Okay, here we go. So instead of filling out that form, we are going to. So the title page of mine is apply for an employer identification number in parentheses EIN online. So we don't have to do that form. So this one says step one, determine your eligibility. You may apply for EIN online if your principal business is located in the United States or US territories. Uh, the person applying online must have a valid taxpayer identification number, social security number, uh, I-10 or EIN number. You are limited to one EIN per responsible party per day. The responsible party is the person who ultimately owns or controls the entity or who exercises ultimate effective control over the entity. Unless the applicant is a governing entity, the responsible party must be an individual, i.e. a natural person, not an entity. Uh, step two, understand the online application. You must complete this application in one session as you will not be able to save and return at a later time. Your session will expire after 15 minutes of inactivity and you will need to start over. Number three, step number three is submit your application. After all validations are done, you will get an EIN, get your EIN immediately upon completion. You can then download, save, and print your EIN confirmation notice. So, yay. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click apply online. <laughs> oh man, EIN assistant says our online assistant is currently unavailable. We apologize for the inconvenience. Please try again at a later time. You may have accessed the online EIN assistant outside of the hours of operation. The hours of operation are posted here. Click. Oh, we just minute, missed it by 18 minutes. So, hours of op. Oh no. 
They don't let you do it on the weekend. You can only do it Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <sighs> That's not good. That's really not good. So, this video is the startup. I'll have to do another video. I'm kind of upset. It's literally all day. This is all I wanted to do. And because this is Saturday, June 10th, this now has to get pushed off to Monday, which means I have to add it to my calendar on this phone, which means that Monday, the 12th, this is going to be one of the first things I do, and I'm going to have to wake up early. So I will see you guys next time. I'm very disappointed.